You learned in the previous video that the frequency resolution of the Fourier transform is determined by the number of points in a time series, and that you can get a finer frequency resolution by adding more points. Now, when you're working with simulated data, this is easy to do because you can arbitrarily create more data. But with real data, it's not always possible to get more time points, particularly if the data are already collected and you're doing offline analyses. So if you can't get more data, but you want to increase the frequency resolution, the solution is applying a procedure called zero padding. Simply put, zero padding means adding a bunch of zeros to the end of the time series. Those zeros don't add any information to the signal, so you're not fundamentally changing any of the characteristics of the signal that you already have, but you are increasing the number of points, which will increase the frequency resolution in the Fourier transform. Here you see an example. This is the original signal. It's a Han taper. It's 40 points long. I'm only plotting it out to 80 for comparison. Here you can see the zero padded version. I've added 40 zeros in this case. Now this will double the frequency resolution, even though the original signal is left unchanged. I say double the frequency resolution because the original signal is 40 points and the zero padded version is 80 points. So double the number of time points, double the frequency resolution. Let's have a look in MATLAB. Here we see the signal. It's a Han taper of 40 points long. Here we take the Fourier spectrum of the signal. And now here I take the magnitude of the Fourier transform. Notice here that I'm not applying either of the two normalization procedures you would need if you wanted the amplitude from the Fourier transform to be in the same units as the original signal. That's okay here because we don't care about the absolute units. What we care about is comparing the amplitude spectrum across different zero padding situations. So here is the normalized vector of frequencies. It's normalized just to go from zero to one. So 0.5 will correspond to the Nyquist frequency. And then I plot the signal and the amplitude spectrum. Here you see the signal. Here is the amplitude spectrum. It has like a negative exponential decay. And now what I'm going to do here is zero pad this signal manually. So here's the signal. It's a 40 point column vector. And I'm going to concatenate 40 zeros, so it's going to double the size of this vector. Now you can see it's 80 points long. The rest of the code in this cell is the same as the code in the previous cell. The only difference is that now we're working with this variable signal pad, which is padded. Here you can see the results. Note that the first 40 points of the two signals are identical. And all the rest of the points, so the, these 40 points here, are just zeros. So they're not changing anything about the characteristics of the data that we already have. But it is giving us finer frequency resolution. And that you see here. In fact, you can even see a few features like this little bump here that is not present in the original Fourier transform. In this example, I added zeros manually. However, this is generally not the recommended procedure because you can do the zero padding directly in the FFT function as you see here. So here's the FFT and now I'm taking the fast Fourier transform of the signal. And here I specify as a second input into the FFT function how many points the FFT function should use to compute the fast Fourier transform. There is some source of confusion here, so you have to be careful to implement this correctly. What you're inputting here is not the number of zeros that you want to add, but the total n of the signal. If you would write zero here, this would actually give you an empty result because MATLAB thinks that you want a zero point FFT from the signal. Now the signal has more than zero points, so MATLAB will truncate the signal until this many points, which means it'll be empty. So if I write one here, even though this signal is 40 points long, MATLAB is only going to compute the FFT on the first point, which is zero. So this is also going to be wrong. So for a 40 point signal, if you want to zero pad by another 40 points, 
that means the total signal that you want would be 80 points long. So then the second input into the f of t function should be 80. MATLAB will recognize that the length of the signal is smaller than this number, and so it will therefore automatically pad this vector with zeros until it gets up to this length. Okay, so now what I'm doing here is create a, a different signal. It's a very short uh, time series. And then here I specify the number of zeros to add after the signal. And then it runs through a loop and it computes the zero padding, so the length of the signal plus however many zeros we want to add, computes the FFT, and in the same line extracts the amplitude and then plots the results. So here you see the power spectrum from each of these FFTs. This black line here corresponds to the Fourier transform of the original signal, which contains six points. So this is our six-point FFT. And in red and blue, you see the resulting amplitude spectrum using a larger number of points, so zero padding the signal with 10 zeros and with 100 zeros for the blue line. And what you see is that some of the features are the same, and some appear to be different. And what's actually happening is that the power spectrum ends up being a sync interpolated version of the original power spectrum. So that's why it looks a lot smoother, and that's why it's more curvy. So the blue line and the red line represent interpolated versions of the amplitude spectrum of the signal. There's one more thing that I want to point out in this code, which is the normalization of the data when you zero pad. In a previous video, you learned about two normalization steps to recover the amplitude of the Fourier transform. Here I'm going to show you one of those normalization steps, which is a bit different than what you might initially intuitively think should be the case. So you might intuitively think that this should be normalized by dividing by n, which is the total n that goes into the Fourier transform, which is, in this case, is this variable zero pad, zero pad n. However, that turns out not to be the correct normalization strategy, as you can see here. The more points in the FFT, the smaller the amplitude. And so this is not the correct normalization procedure. The correct normalization for dividing by n is divide by the original n, so the number of points in the original signal not the total number of points, including all the zeros. So this could be divided by length signal. And now you can see the amplitude spectra overlap. And this is now the correct normalization. So in this video, I introduced you to zero padding in the time domain in order to increase frequency resolution in the frequency domain. And I showed you how this is implemented in MATLAB, both manually by concatenating zeros onto the end of the signal and using the second input in the FFT function to let MATLAB do the zero padding for you.